challenge or the slight situation that Samuel had was he wasn't yet, and the scripture says he wasn't yet familiar with the voice of God. So he kept running to where he was familiar. 2023, you're not going to run to what's familiar. 2023, you're going to be uncomfortable in your faith as you're hearing the voice of God. See, you can be as uncomfortable as you want to, but if you've got the peace of God, make me uncomfortable, but I've got peace, I've got faith. All I need, peace and faith. And so he wasn't familiar, and that was okay, because eventually he learned it's God speaking to me. It's God telling me what to do. It's God that laid this heavy burden of the whole nation of Israel on a 12-year-old boy. Why is that? Because with God, nothing is impossible. With God, you can do all things. Yes. Say, lay it on me, Lord. song is so, it just rings in my heart. He says he's jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I'm the tree. Bending the knee beneath the wind of his grace and his mercy. You begin to start thinking about it. And then it's like, all of a sudden, you become unaware of every everything begins to be, it's like an eclipse. Y'all see the eclipse. Where it's like his love begins to just eclipse. You don't even see that stuff anymore. Pain begins to leave you when you focus on how much he loves you. Your body, your DNA starts to change. Why? Because the divine nature that is inside of you begins to start coming out and Holy Spirit begins to bear witness to the truth of how much God loves you, that you are accepted, you've been adopted, you are so loved that no one can separate you from his love. No one, no entity, no nothing, no devil, nothing can stop how good God loves you. Welcome, welcome. Hey, y'all. Good evening to you all. Welcome to Faith That Takes, where we lay hold of the promises of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. I just hurt myself. I'm so geeked with that. By sight, yeah. I'm so geeked with this technology. Okay, let me get back to the church. <laughs> hey, y'all. Good, good. Good to see y'all tonight. Welcome. Welcome. Like, share, make some comments, join in and, and everything and, and so forth. Good. Y'all can come up a little closer if y'all want to. Y'all ain't gonna come up no closer. 
Y'all can't come to this side over this way? Can y'all? Yeah, can y'all come over? Yeah. I'm just, I'm an I'm a usher tonight. That's, uh, that's the closest y'all can come. Can you come up close right there? <laughs> no, that's good. I just, come on up. There we go. Thank y'all. Woo, boy. Amen. Y'all closer now. <laughs> I felt like y'all were way back there. I was like, okay, good, good. Like, share, make some comments. Share with someone that needs to hear the word of faith in which we preach. All right. Got some great things that are happening. We got some things that are, all right, don't, don't send me no, t- no email, no text messages about the Cowboys, okay? Someone said about, you know, you should have been praying or something or whatever. I was like, no, that's called football. I don't do that. <clears throat> that's not that, so I don't do that. So anyways, all right, y'all got your Bibles. We're going we're gonna to go in. I've been, I've been, well, co- of course, we all pray, and we're going to continue to pray. Um, but I'm, I'm, there's something I want to kind of share with you. I got some, some information, not information, but I have <coughs> some revelation from Sunday, but I also have additional revelation uh, for some other stuff. Why are you sitting way over there? Come on back over the si- over some. Thank you. I'm I'm the usher tonight. I just want to. I, I just want. I just want everybody closer to me. You get the power, huh? No, I ain't cold. Lady Ross. All right. Anyways. All right. But let's let's y'all got some jokes tonight. All right. I'm just joking. All right. Let's get your Bibles out. And um. Anyways, if you're online, we have. Uh, multiple ways to, to sow into the ministry. Uh, if you're here, you can do that. You have our text to give, actually not text to give anymore. We have the envelopes to cash apps, and we also have our Kim app that you can download the Kim app, and it's um, available to you if you have not. And if you're out there, do us a favor. Go ahead and share the, the, the app with some, someone else. You can share it with someone else. Um, and that will be good. And they can download the app, and you can keep up with the messages and what we're doing here at the ministry and um, so forth, and that'll be great. And, uh, right, okay. That's the app. Now, if you want to, it's Friday night. Somebody say Friday night. Friday night, you want to be here. Um, I believe God will be speaking. Uh, Pastor Jeff will be here. (coughs) <coughs> We're going to have um, preaching and the prophetic, of course. This is so important. Um, this day and time. Man, I just hear that. I just want to share something about that as well. But anyways, make sure you invite someone. This will be at 7 o'clock. This is not a like a service, so to speak. I would, I would call this more of a flow. So just come and expect to hear um, some things that God will reveal to you about your lives and, and what he's going to be doing um, for us in this season. All right, somebody say refresher. This is a refresher. Um, we call it a faith refresher. We normally do this. So we want you to come out and um, have your faith boosted to another level. I'm sure you already boosted and you're coming out. But anyways, I want you to come out with that. And um, you can share that with someone uh, as well. You'll probably see the flyer out on Facebook, so you can do that as well. Thank y'all. Glory to God. Um, what did I do? Oh, I ain't have nobody in here to do this for me, so I'll just, just give myself give myself 30 s- Yeah, I'm doing my timer. Y'all got my timer. They say get my timer. Okay, let me get out of there. Hold on. Oh, I can't. Ma- oh, y'all stuck now. <laughs> here, here you go. We're not gonna be here three hours. I got my, I got my phone too. Okay. Everybody's trying to get that right. All right, get your Bibles out. Make this declaration of faith. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. 
My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to be taught the indestructible, incorruptible seed of the word of God. My life is changing after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I already have everything I need. It's already done in Jesus' name. Now, we were talking about uh, on Sunday uh, about the supernatural um, power that uh, obviously the widow was able to sustain in that aspect. Now, although this was Old Testament, the power of God is, um, I wouldn't say, uh, it's, it was just for the Old Testament today. The supernatural power of God still operates. However, we have, a, we have an advantage. Somebody say advantage. Um, the Spirit of God was an inside of her. Um, and, of course, obviously, it wasn't living inside of Elijah or Elisha we were talking about. Most people say, yes, it was. No, it's a whole different story. He's in us. Now, I want to make sure that it's clear that we're on a different dispensation. We're using this. However, we're in a different dispensation. So tonight, I want to make sure that you hear this from that standpoint. So now, she was believing for the supernatural to take place after the prophet said something to her. Now, I want to make sh something clear in terms of the prophetic and when we prophesy or when the prophetic word is given. Most people don't know how to respond in faith. Okay, somebody say, I must respond in faith. Because this is a problem because most people, they'll hear it and God knows I love revelation, and I love to go to the next level and so forth. But when the revelation is revealed, it is to be manifested in our lives and not to be moving on, even though we may move on. But however, that particular thing that God has revealed for us, he wants us to walk this thing out. Somebody say, walk it out. So I, I want to go with, and, I, and I, I'm going to turn a page. I'm going to go back to to. Well, let's just go to 2 Kings r right quick. 2 Kings 4, and I'm going to read a few verses. Uh, I'm going to start, well, let me just read this. Now there cried a certain woman uh, of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my, uh, my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him uh, my two sons, to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, <laughs> what hast thou in thy, the house? Okay. And she said, thy, hus thy handmaid have not anything in the house except a pot of oil. And then he said to her, Go and borrow all the vessels of the neighbors and so forth. Empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and pour it out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. And she went and did, or went from him, shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels to her. And, of course, they brought the vessels, and she poured. And then it came to pass that the vessels were full. She said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said, We don't have any more. That's it. And all the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children on the rest. Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you right now, Holy Spirit, that you're here with us to lead us and guide us into all truth um, concerning this word tonight. We give you praise and we give you honor. We claim sharing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you cut the... Um, Turn that heat back a little bit. It feels like your tea. <laughs> that tea is steaming. It's not steaming in here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. The units are working, though. All right. They working, boy. Woo. I felt the heat. I said, this the, the, is this the presence of the Lord? or <laughs> The heat was hot. I was like, woo. Okay. 
So somebody say, my oil will not cease. The oil will in increase. The oil upon your life will increase. Wherever you are, the oil for your positions in life, the oil for your calling in life, and so forth, it has increased. I'm not saying that it's going to, it has. You've entered into a season where it has. So what's on you now, you're able to prosper. You're able to prosper beyond. I don't want you to think where you are. I know some of you, as soon as I started talking about where you are and where you're working, you start thinking about what you make and all this. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about your fixed income. Don't worry about any of that. You're living off the kingdom now. Amen. So the kingdom of God is so important and how things operate. They're voice activated. Somebody say voice activated. You have to know how certain things operate. So this is why we have to watch what we say. We can't get around people and let them say certain things and we join in. Everybody got that? All right, so this is what happened. Elisha comes in and he speaks a word over what she has. See, what, right now where we are, you have to examine what you have. Okay? Please examine what you have. Because what, you're, what you have, you're able to prosper with what you have. You're able, your mind, your intellectual property, what you have, your creativity. It is the Lord that gives you power to get wealth. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm talking about, there's so many things that are running through me right now, but I want to make sure it's clear to you what I gave you on Sunday. And if you're online and you didn't hear it, go back and listen to it. What I gave you was prophetic to where you're going in this season. Amen. So it doesn't matter what you make, where you are, your faith in this season is able to push you forward. Glory to God. Bring to you what God announced to you on Sunday. So your oil will not increase. So the man of God came in and he said, this is what's going to happen for you. This is what's going to take place. If you notice in that text, he never said, God said. Because of his position at that moment, what he was able to do, he was able to speak a word in her season and it was to come to pass. Now, why am I saying this? She, she had a choice to ignore what he said or to participate. All right, now, coming back to what I said before, I'm going to go back through the points again, but I want to make sure that something is clear. When a prophetic word, I don't, I don't look at messages anymore on Sundays. I don't look at them as just a message. I look at it as being what God is saying at this moment. There's a big difference because if anybody can get up and say a message, anybody can say, but what is God saying right now? This is what you want to know. What Jesus is saying, what the Holy Spirit, what is God saying to you right now? Understanding that your faith will work in this season where you are. Faith will always work. However, it's not a cookie cutter. I want to say this. The leopards, listen to this, they were leopards. The woman with the issue of blood, she had the issue of blood. The blind man, he was blind. Okay? Different. But faith work. Got it? The only thing that we can say and understand that faith will work. Faith does work. It will work. But don't let someone come to you and say you have to do it this way, this way, and that way. This is why I don't do that here at this church. I don't tell you. I'll give you, and I, I, I pray that the eyes of your understanding opens to your situation to your circumstance, because it's not just this one thing. No, no, no. You should be hearing for yourself. You should be hearing what thus said, says the Lord to your circumstance, okay? So I'm not looking at it as just a, different, uh, a message. So why am I saying this? Most people don't know how to respond in faith. They don't know how to respond for the, because I just threw this out here, that you are already increased, and you're going to be increased one-fifth above everything. And so that you're doing, and it's happening already. Is, uh, is it happening already? When you look at a zero balance on something that you thought you had to pay, and you don't have to pay that, 
That's a testament that is already happening. Amen, somebody. So you got to think, boy, you got to get it. I told y'all, it's like, somebody said, get your expectation up. I know it's Tuesday, but get, get it up. Get it up. It's not Sunday. It's Tuesday. Get it up. Okay. So, somebody say, I'm expecting to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm expecting to see the prophetic word over my life manifest. I'm glad you said that. All right, let's go on a little further. Let's go to Habakkuk. I'm coming back to the woman right quick with the oil because your oil is going to increase. Go to Habakkuk. And this is the problem that most people have. And they say, well, Pastor G, the word didn't work or something didn't work or whatever. And I, you know, and I get it. I understand. I was in that place before. I was in that place where people were saying certain things and like, Woo, faith is working and, and all these other stuff. And I'm seeing people and it's manifesting in their lives and, and so forth. And I had no clue what was going on. And I'm going to tell you, quite frankly, I was getting upset. Uh-oh, somebody ain't out here with me. I was getting a little upset because I was like, you telling me this and that. But I didn't know how to work certain things. So in the kingdom of God, things work a certain way. One way you have to understand, you have to understand, you... In the kingdom of God, you have to become a student of, uh, let's just say, you have to be the person that can listen to Holy Spirit, okay? You got to be able to discern his voice, and it's not this audible voice, it's a knowing. Now, I don't, I don't have time to go to 1 John, but I, maybe I'll get there, 220, but I'll, I'll get back there. But I want to go here and show you something, how you can push yourself through and even gird yourself up in the midst of getting a word on Sunday or getting a word when you're studying your word and how to appropriate this thing by faith. Okay, look at Habakkuk. I will stand upon my watch. Here it is. There is the problem right there. Most people, after they hear the word, they don't watch. They don't get on guard. There's no guard. That word guard, obligation, service, watch, guard, and so forth. Uh-oh. Oh, oh I, thought so, I thought I got a heart. Okay, I was looking for my heart. Okay. So it's a safeguard. It's a keep and so forth. So there's a watching. Somebody say watching. So I'm setting myself upon the watch. I'm going to go ahead and read a verse first, and then I'm going to come back and explain some stuff. I will stand upon my watch and set uh, me over the tower and will watch to see. Don't just sit there watching, but watching to see what he will say unto me and what I shall or what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now, listen to this. And the Lord answered me. Here it is. When you get a word, you listen. This is why I I tell people from here on out, y'all, please, whatever you do, don't go into prayer without your notebook. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time. Don't go in there without your notebook. Because the Lord is speaking to you. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to you about what was said. Now, I'm going to go a little further. All right, he says, and the Lord answered me and said, right here, after the fact, he said, he was sitting there. um, Let's go back. And he will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved, what I will answer. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Well, you can't write the vision if you're in prayer and you ain't got nothing to write with. That's the problem with most people. They'll hear this word, your oil will increase, but you won't go in and let him continue the dialogue. The dialogue has to continue. So I mentioned you don't go to where I, you don't work where I work. You don't deal what I have to deal with. You don't go travel where I, you don't handle business like, you, you don't do that. So what I have to do, God, what did you say to me on Sunday? This is what you said, my oil will increase. What do I have in the house? Because I, I, I'm not punching the clock the rest of my life. I'm not going to do that because I don't have to. There are cre- create. See, I, I told you he gives you power to create wealth. 
He gives you power to create. No, I didn't say he's going he's going to do it for you. He's placed gifts and abilities inside of you, but if you don't release them, you'll continue in that path that you don't want to keep doing this. You don't want to deal with these people over and over again. There is a way that seems right. You're trying to get out of that way. All right, so what he says, I want you to understand, I want you to write it down. I want to show you what to do. I want to show you how to get this done. Most people, most, I wouldn't say all Christian, most Christians, what they do, they say, oh, pastor, that was a great word on Sunday. But then you go through the week, but there is nothing there is no response. There needs to be a faith response. Somebody say a response. Okay, so what he says, the response, the first response is, listen. That's the first thing you want to do. Continue to listen, because the dialogue isn't over. It isn't over, and I'm saying this because there's more that he wants to add to this. He wants to continue to add on to what he said. I was in prayer and um, I was saying, oh God, I love this revelation. I love, love what you're giving me. I have things that I've already written in my prayers and so forth. And he says, no, don't move from this right here. Stay right here. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, tell them that their oil is increased. Don't move. He says, no, you, you should see. He, all right, okay. The apostle Paul said it like this. I travail in birth or in labor until Christ is formed in you. When there is a word given to you, I'm not moving out of it until I see it in your life. And you shouldn't move either. You should bring forth that thing. All right, we're going to get into that travail part. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get that. Write the vision and make it plain. Write it upon tablets that he that hear it may run, that read it, of course. Obviously, y'all heard that, right? For what I told you is for an appointed time. It's going to happen. But here's the thing. The appointed time, some people look at this and say, well, I'm just going to wait until God does it. No, we're in a different dispensation. He says, no, you have the faith. Faith don't operate by time. Faith don't care what time it is. Faith brings forth this thing. This is what Jesus was doing. He says, I know you're a leper. He looked at him and says, you're a leper. Yeah, that's fine. How long would it take medicine to heal that? We don't have nothing to heal that right now. So Jesus says, all right, go show yourself to the priest. As they were walking, watch the wisdom of God. The wisdom is, is, was in his word. The wisdom was in his word. And he says, go show yourself to the priest. Okay, you missed that. Their healing was in their action. So when they took the steps of going to show themselves, they were cleansed. So he knew they were going to be cleansed. Okay, why? Because it was already prophesied that what would happen, what he would say. He was functioning with the word. The word gave him that authority to operate a certain way and that he would demonstrate to us that this is how we should do it. He was not doing, okay, he was, okay, let me slow down a bit. Okay, all right. Jesus, when he, I'm coming back to all the other stuff. When Jesus rose from the dead, he says, all authority has been given unto me, both in, he both in heaven and in earth. He said that when he got up. When he was walking on the earth, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. But he was doing it. Okay. And he was doing it in faith. So he was using the same thing that he gave us to use. So anytime he walked into a situation, he was laughing. He's like, oh, <laughs> all things are possible. All things are possible. What are y'all looking at? He's like, what are you looking at? Storm, sit down. He was telling them, sit down. He told the storm to sit down. Why did he, and then he looked at them and says, you could have told her to sit down. And they marveled at him. He's like, what manner of man is this? He says, I'm the same one that you are. Okay, y'all can't handle that. He said, you can do this. That's why he said it. That's another message. I ain't going to go into that. All right. So let's look at this. 
I, I, I'm talking about if you just joined us online, praise God, I hope you join us online. If you're watching online, I'm telling you, if you're not participating, I'm trying to help you tonight. God is trying to help you understand how to bring this thing forward and not to be caught up in some, see, there's a, hold on, he just mentioned something to me. There's a whole lot of mess going on talking about this stuff don't work. There's a lot of people, I, I watched this guy, this guy's out there, he was talking about, well, you know, it couldn't be this and couldn't be that. Quite eloquent, you know, he's quite eloquent. I said, you ain't had no experience with God. You hurt, you've been hurt in church, and now you're talking about, well, this stuff don't work. No, this stuff does work. That man with that argument... A man, the man with the experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. So here it is. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Somebody say, this is my time. When is the appointed time? This is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time where the free favors of God profusely abound. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now, when is the kingdom coming? It's here now. I don't have to wait for it to come. It's here in authority and in demonstration. We have that now. Somebody say, I have it now. Okay. So the vision is yet for an appointed time. But listen to this. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry. Now he's talking about in his dispensation. Wait for it because it shall surely come to pass. Now, here's the thing. When you get it, you get a word. You, <laughs> you're going to have to war over what you got. This is what most people fail to realize, that the enemy doesn't want you to have nothing. And listen to this. Don't believe. See, most people, you know, Satan has done a job on some people. He has proven to some people that he don't exist. And then he tried, you know, people, I mean, he's proven to some people. And actually, these are some Christians that say this. It's like, well, you know, it ain't the devil, it's you. Huh? It ain't all me. Jesus says, the scripture says, you have an adversary called the devil, okay? So we have, to, we have to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, well, why that's there if there's not any opposition? Okay, but he's given the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Everything that opposes God, everything that opposes our victory, we have the right to pull it down. Amen. So here we have it. So when he's telling Rebecca, he says, look, I want to make sure you don't, don't forget this. Write it down. When you write it down, you stand there and watch. And you stand there and you push through. You don't sit there and say, well, you know, God, it might happen. Never. Say it's happening in my life. It's happening for me right now. Tell, say this, I'm increasing even as I'm speaking it now. Glory to God. Keep speaking increase. Keep speaking increase. Keep speaking increase. Keep speaking it. Say it when you get up. Say it when you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep, say it in your dreams. Be increasing in your dreams. Glory to God. All right. So here it is. So we got to understand that we, we should treat this when you hear that word. Now, it could migrate, uh, not migrate, it could simply, um, I would say, it could continue to expand, and it will expand into, and what I mean expand into your life, it becomes pliable or practical. We, we say practical. It's like, how do I apply this practical? Well, what happens is God will begin to give you strategies. He will begin to give you revelation about your increase. He begins to give you revelation of how to accomplish this. Ain't no fear. Somebody saying, ain't, ain't no fear here. Ain't no fear here. So the fact is, you have to continue to believe by faith. This is why faith is important. It's so important because it's not going to manifest but by faith. And it's according to your faith. Glory to God. Aren't you glad it's according to your faith? Not somebody, I got to wait for somebody else. No, you can increase anytime you want. All right, so here it is. Let's move on a little further. 
Okay, let's see. And the last verse in Habakkuk, behold, of course, y'all, here it is. It says, but the just shall live by, uh uh-uh, his faith. His faith. So when you see this, when you hear it, it's like, okay, God, I'm excited about this thing. Let's get, let's get working right now. Let's, let's see how we're going to work this out. How you want me to do this? But you have to ask him. You have to get to that place where you're watching and you're in prayer. Now, I'm not talking about regular prayer. Uh-oh, here we go. I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm talking about praying in the Spirit and letting him lead you and guide you into the increase. Praise God. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. That's John 16. When you think about that, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. So if he's telling you, I need you. See, there's a partnership. You you remember I started out near the end of the year. Well, actually, at the end of the year, I start saying that we have to partner with the promise. We have to permit. We have to partner with Holy Spirit in this walk. And it's not a it's not one of those walks where um, I'm leading him and then calling him leading me. (laughs) You probably missed that. Okay, I have to be a student to listen and follow his leading. So let, let's go on a little further. Um, let's go back to, um, let's go back over to 2 Kings. This is how it happened for her. She heard it. She heard, she heard it. She was in an impossible situation. I love it. See, faith thrives in the impossible situations. Actually, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I was thinking about it today. When you have faith, something is like when, when, when faith begins to um, build up, I went, I, cause it's in you, okay? When, when it starts to, you, you begin to get excited and, and it starts to, um, you become empowered with it. You, you don't realize that the opposite is happening. Okay, when I'm, I'm saying this. So when you're building yourself up, in your most holy faith, or praying and you're believing and faith is coming to you, it's for the impossibilities. Okay, it's for the impossibilities. It's not for something that you can do. Okay, let me do it like this. If I'm looking at something, okay, if there is nothing and I'm building myself up in faith, so to speak, so when I'm doing that and I'm feeding myself faith, when I'm feeding faith, <laughs> what's happening is the impossibility is attracted. It's, faith is for the impossibilities. It's not for <laughs> something that you can do. Okay, this is, I, I don't want to confuse you. I, I want you to see it like this. It's like you're not dealing with anything right now, but you're working yourself for that. Okay, if I go to the gym and I'm working out, all right, I'm going to use football. I ain't going to use a certain team. Somebody say, use my team. You must be in the playoffs. All right, okay. Yes, all right. Well, we know. All right. Don't get upset, though. That's all I've got to say. All right. (laughs) Don't let there be an upset. All right, okay. It won't be. I, I can assure you. I can assure you. All right, that was all carnal. Let me come back. All right, let me come back. So here we go. So if I'm working out and I got a, I'm working out and I know that I have an opponent that's coming, I shouldn't try to work out <laughs> when the opponent gets there. <laughs> that's very dumb. That wouldn't help me. It's like, you know, you tell your opponent, Hold up. Let me do some reps. Let me do some pull-ups. Let me do some whatever, some squats. Let me, let me work it out. <clears throat> then we can fight. No. You're going to lose that battle. So what, what we do is we have to build ourselves up. When we're doing it, there is stuff coming our way. If it comes our way, I'm prepared. I'm not caught off guard. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that faith is, is like, okay, no, it thrives. It, it looks for the impossible situation. 
So when you, you can't sit idle, it, it wants to. It's like, okay, when I see this, see, when I said your oil is increased, has increased, some people were looking at me like, what are you talking about? I can't, this is not. See, you're measuring yourself. God is taking you to places. He's taking you to a house you can't afford. He's taking you to a position that you cannot accomplish by yourself. This is what he's doing. So if you don't need faith for stuff you can do yourself, that's not what he's doing. So you have, see, that there's, that, there's that labor part. There's that part that I have to sit there and I have to keep pushing myself. I have to get up, keep getting up early in the morning, early in the morning. Before, all right, okay, this is why I say get up early in the morning. You get the gospel news. You get the good news before TV 10 bad news, CNN bad news, social media bad news. It's like, no, that's not my news today. That's not my news. That's y'all's news. I ain't participating with that. It's like, no, that, no, this, but you don't understand. I do understand. That's your stuff. That's not mine. So now my mind and my heart is targeted toward the good news. So the thing that, that yes, I'm, I, I'm on a whole different channel. So people are looking at something else. It's like, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not, what, that's not my report. Reporting now, Barbara whoever, reporting. Did such and such happened last night. No, I, what are you talking about? No, this is the other news. And see, the cool thing about our news, if we get up early in the morning, I know I jumped into this. The cool thing, that when we get up, we can actually command it. We can change it. We can command it ourselves. So we can't, we won't fall prey as the consequences of the day. All right, let's go back to the woman. Let's increase with some oil. I think I'm done now. Uh-oh, I'm almost done. I got two minutes. Direct petition. Somebody say direct petition. It's, it's important to look at the direct petition that this woman had. She comes to, to Elisha specifically with that one thing. This is the thing that I need. I need you to understand this is what I need. How many of y'all guys met your need? He's met your need one time or another, right? Okay, then why? He will always meet your need. There is nothing. You don't startle him with something big. You, we, he ain't scared when we ask for something bigger. Some people probably saying, why are you saying ask for something bigger? Because I can. Because I can. The promises of God are yes and amen. I'm going after them. All right, so here it is, a di direct petition. It tells us Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews uh, 4, 15, 4, 15 and 16. Now, in her dispensation, she didn't, she didn't have this, but she had faith. Okay? They had faith. They could believe. Okay, but this is something different right here. For we had, okay, whoo. How much more, y'all? My God. How much more? We have a high priest. Okay, let me come back one, one, one more time. I got to work this one. How much more? Okay, she had Elisha. We have Jesus. Amen, somebody. We have a high priest. Um, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we were or we are yet without sin. Next verse. Here we go. Let us. Therefore. Why is the therefore there? Because he's the high priest. Therefore, I can come boldly, boldly unto the throne of grace that don't run out ain't never running out that I may obtain what I'm asking for 
You can get what you're asking for. It's by grace. Find grace to help in the, t- watch, in the what? Time to need. I'm a, t- boy, ooh, I got I to gotta end with this. Listen to this. See, in heaven, all right, in the spirit, things are done. Things are done in the spirit. I don't have to beg him for that. It's already done. However, I got to get it in time. Okay, that stuff, that is in the spirit realm. It's a real place. It is there. It's already. God made things. He made things physical, and he made things. All right, there are things seen, and there are things unseen. Woohoo! Praise God. So I got some unseen things that I can bring into the scene. My God. So I have that option to bring that, but I have to do it by faith. There are things that are waiting. People are going to be so, oh, my God. Mm. They're going to look up and say, my God. And get in front of Jesus. Jesus said, look at all this stuff. They're going to be like, what the world? What is all this? He said, stuff that you didn't call for. Things that are in the spirit realm that you pull into the natural. Watch this. The things that are in the spirit realm are able to become formed or formed into what we need here. It is able to attract everything, everything that is needed to manifest. Somebody say manifest. So when he says you can come, you're going to a place that does exist. And I can bring that thing into the natural. So there are things in the spirit that are eternal. And he says that you can bring it into the natural. It's there, made, prepared. He keeps ready right there for us. It's not there that the enemy can stop. He he can't stop this from coming in. The only way he stops it, if you stop saying it. So. Bringing it into the net. Go back to my verse, uh, 16 verse. God, we're almost out of time. Okay, we are out of time. (laughs) Glory to God. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, find help, time to help, um, that we may have mercy and find grace to help in the time of need, to bring that thing that we need here. We have to participate. Some people will, Dave, boy, I tell you, Jesus did things immediately. Somebody say immediately. Look, y'all, I'm telling you, I don't know what you're looking at. You have to begin to see that I don't have to continue to wait forever. And I know this is a hard thing because some people are saying, you just don't understand how long. I, uh-uh, I don't understand how long. He, say, he doesn't say that. He says, if you can believe All things are possible to him that believes. We have to stay with it to pull this thing into the natural. It's possible. Everyone that Jesus went around. See, I I hear this in the spirit. Most of us have been taught how to wait. We've been trained, educated spiritually how to wait. I told you on Sunday, people say, wait on the Lord. Be of good strength. And he shall. You you had to wait for that too. You had to wait. No, we're on the other side. Come on, y'all, we're on the other side. (laughs) We are on the other side. We're on the other side. I heard this guy preach this. It was crazy like this. He said, Jesus was the last Adam. It was the last one. Okay, he was the last one on the side of Adam. When Adam failed, all of this, that was it. The last Adam. You're not a part of the last Adam. You are a new creation. This is a new creation. You're a new creation. So we function differently than those that were in the Old Testament. They fu- I mean, they function, praise God. This is why they say the cloud of witnesses. They're looking and saying, what y'all doing? Why y'all complaining? Didn't Jesus come? 
they're looking down and saying, what, what, are they, what are they saying? But he's saying this to us. We're on another side. We're on the other side. So we can call things that be not as though they were. We have that. We have the ability to do this. So when the oil, your, somebody say, my oil will increase. My oil has increased. Increases upon my life. Increases upon my house. There is no lack in my house. I have more than enough to meet the need of every situation. I am redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. No weapon formed against me will ever prosper. Hallelujah. So the request, the direct, this is that direct, this is a direct petition. Our petition should be specific and exactly what I need. I don't need to run around. I got what I need to create. I was driving home, and I paused for a second, <clears throat> and I was listening to this guy, and he's a praise and worship leader, but I didn't know that he was a multimillionaire. Not off of his records. <laughs> he was an entrepreneur. This is what got me. <clears throat> he said one thing, one thing that he said, that totally changed how I thought. As a man thinks in his heart, Susie. I've heard this scripture over and over again. The Lord gives you power to get wealth. I was like, yes, that's great. Oh man, he does give me to praise God. I've been saying that for years. Praise God, he gives me power. Woo, praise God. In my religious mind. Then I heard him say one thing. He said, God, he says, it's the Lord that gives you power to create wealth. I got to stay right here for a second. I'm a creator by nature. God's divine nature is in me. God is a creator. I'm a creator. So I began to stop. I said, oh, my God. Woo! Boy, I saw some zeros come across that screen right there. I saw some numbers start to build. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm creative. If you're out there, you're creative. They gone. That's all right. You gone. You're creative. <laughs> you are creative. You are creative. Some of y'all got recipes that need to be in the store. I'm preaching to you. Got recipes. Grandma recipes will work. You got a pie recipe that needs to be on the shelf. Somebody's store. You coming out to see some of me? Yeah, that's right. It ain't just for Thanksgiving at your house. It should be in the store. Come on, y'all. I mean, <clears throat> simple things. You can knit certain things. All right, y'all looking at me like something like whatever. No, you have, sk you have abilities. You don't realize there are people out there online waiting to get what you got. My God, when I heard that thing, I said, create? I said, boy, I'm going to create everything I possibly can create. I was going to be creating everything. I was about to create content and everything. I'm going to create, not just content. I'm going to create, what you doing today? I'm going to bring my, I'm going to grab my mother-in-law. I'm going to bring her in the kitchen. And I'm going to like, okay, this is going to be Barbara's hour. <laughs> Praise God. Sponsored by Kraft. <laughs> I'm telling you. You've been, that oil, I was like, my God, I'll sit there, I'll sit down and come up with an idea so fast and be like, but the thing is, I don't run with it. It's good, you get the idea, but you don't run with it. You gotta run, somebody say, I gotta run with it. See, you, people think it's like, you write the vision so that somebody else, no, you can write the vision and you run with it. And remind yourself, it's like, get up. And it's like, I've only asked for one thing. So if I've asked for it, I get up and I run with it. So <clears throat> make it a habit. When you get the word, 
you get it, you get a prophetic word, you get it, write it. Stay with it. Because I'm coming back and say, where is it at? Where is it? Did it, did it happen? Or what's going on? Did he call you last night? <laughs> I'm just asking. Because if he called you and then you hung up on him, that ain't my fault. Because I prophet, I just told you, there's a man, man for you and person for your life, but you just keep hanging up on him. Man, open the door. You mad because he opened the door. No. <laughs> All I did was open the door. How you doing today? Oh, you trying to be fresh. I just asked you how you doing. I'm telling you, you got you got you got to think about it. So when you get that word, write it down, see it, walk in it, be in it, live in it. Okay, let's we better end this because <laughs> I I can't. These folks in y'all ain't y'all online. Y'all don't hear what they saying. They saying all kinds of stuff. But anyway, praise God. I better come to an end now. I'm tell telling you, increases on your life increases on your life. That oil will not dry. Whenever you put your hands to do, it's going to prosper. People are being, if they're, if they're around you and they're being blessed, you, you should be a partakers of it too. They are blessed because I'm there. They, I, yep, I showed up. They'd be like, oh, they, oh, wow. Oh, this is happening for us this time? Yeah, because of me. I'm God's favorite child. It's like, this, this happened? Oh, yeah, we all getting ready. I decree and declare. Look, I decree and declare raises over your life right now. I'm talking, look, don't even make any sense. They say, well, I don't need one. No, I'm telling you have one now. Just like, just like, he, like Elijah said, no, you have it now. It's going to increase, it's going to overflow, and it will not dry up. And that one-fifth, like I said, you're going to experience it like never before. It's going to be overflowing and save that. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. We thank you for those that are streaming. Glory to God. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. More is happening. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for it. Father, we thank you for it now. It is in Jesus' name we give you glory. If you're out there, y'all keep praying. If you're, if you're out there, you don't know who Jesus is, this word is for you tonight. You will not increase without him in your life in this season. You need Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And make him your master tonight. And he will be a restorer of years that you've lost. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Tonight, I repent of my sins. I believe that you died for my sins, and I believe that you rose again on the third day. Tonight, I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that you're my Lord and my Savior. I'm saved. Amen. You said that. I don't care where you are. You might not have tapped in, and you might just be watching out there. God is changing your story. He's changing your story. He's changing your life right now. This was a good decision that you've made. And I know you're struggling. You're trying to figure out certain things, but it's working for you right now. Get with us, 645 Mayflower Road in the city of Norfolk, Virginia, where we love God, love people, and live out purpose. Come and see us until Sunday. Praise God. Keep loving God, loving people, and living out your purpose. We'll see you then. Lift your hands if you're in the building. Father, we thank you.